Let's talk a little bit briefly about the adrenaline and cortisol cycle. So when you have a stressor, that's what stressor comes in, your adrenaline begins to spike. Now, that's not necessarily a bad thing. If you have a saber-toothed tiger you need to run away from, you want your adrenaline to kick in, right? But also sometimes a small amount of adrenaline can be motivating to study for an exam, to prepare for a big work meeting, to, you know, motivate yourself to get off the couch, do what you need to do. So a certain amount of adrenaline helps us get up in the morning. So a little bit can be helpful. Too much can be problematic. But anyway, when adrenaline kicks in, shortly thereafter, a hormone called cortisol kicks in. And that begins to go up. And as that peaks, then the adrenaline starts to drop. So stressor, adrenaline goes up, cortisol goes up, then they both drop. Hopefully a period with no stressors, another stressor hits, it happens again. Our bodies are, are, are built to deal with this. Like, So if your stressors are happening and your adrenaline spiking once in a while, often you won't have major physical symptoms. However, if you have continual stressors, and by stressors, I would like to say stressors are real. They definitely are real. Some can be very, very serious stressors, obviously, and some can be minor. How we deal with that stressor impacts this cycle as well. So if we respond to minor stressors with a lot of anxiety and worry, right, which is really kind of what an anxiety disorder is, so we're continually responding to every stressor, whether it's a big one or not, with the adrenaline. And then the cortisol kicks in. As you can see with this graph, with those continual stressors and the way we respond, another piece of this, is that the cortisol never gets a chance to come down. So cortisol can remain elevated chronically on an ongoing basis. And that has actually been implicated in a number of major diseases. 